Yo, welcome back to Genshin Impact. In the last episode, we continued with the events and met some cool characters. For example, Shinyan was finally in the game. And also, Xiao. And oh my god, I was I was simping, I was crying. A lot of emotions were going on. And then we started some random uh, side quests to distract ourselves. And now... I want to try still pulling for Kokomi. This is why... Okay, you gotta make sacrifices because I got a few primer gems from like daily commissions and spiral abyss. I worked hard for these <laughs> just to get absolutely nothing as always. I mean, you know, you know the drill. Am I right, guys? Wasting everything. Wow, <laughs> this is such a good feeling. Oh my god, I love this so much. Oh, I thought I would have pulls here, but nope. Okay, we don't. Okay, guys, anyway. If we want Primal Gems, we have to do the story quest, so here we go. Also, I'm locked from co -op. This is why I'm recording this right now, because I still want to farm Primal Gems tonight with my friend and co-op. By collecting Electroculi. Electroculus, I don't know. But because you get Primal Gems for ascending your statues. Oh, this is the place where we're at. I thought this one. Wait. Did I even know that this place exists? Okay, that's Yusha Terrace. I'm very much confused. Do I see Yanfei? What is Yanfei doing here? And Goba and Xiangling. All oh, right. And Kuching and Ningguang. Welcome everyone to the Masterful Chef's Final. At the appointment of this organizing committee, I am your host and officiator, Yenfei. How fitting that she's here because I just uh, sent her to level 80 today because I was... I needed her for my second team in Spiral Abyss. Hey, Yenfei's here too! Mm. This event is brought to you by the Liyue Qixing in collaboration with a number of participating enterprises. The competition is divided into the selections phase and the finals. We don't have any sponsors? Man, that sucks. We saw many contestants from all over Liyue in the selections process, and all of them were outstanding chefs in their own right. Of those, the two strongest participants were put through to today's finals. Oh, Smiley Yansho is here too. Okay, damn. He actually joined after we talked to him, that's nice. In just a few short moments, the finals will take place right here before your very right, eyes. That, that's the guy from the side quest in the last episode, that's why we couldn't start this quest, okay, I see. As the officiator, it is my honor and privilege to represent the organizing committee and indeed the people of Liyue and overseeing today's proceedings. We have like, we have someone in the, in the in judges that is on our side, is that even fair? Next. Please allow me to introduce the judges. There will be a select panel and an audience panel. The three members of the select panel are... The Tianquan, Lady Ningguang. <laughs> the Yuheng, Lady Kuching. And last but not least, gourmet connoisseur, Uncle Tian. In addition to these three, ten judges will be chosen from among the audience to sample our contestants' dishes and cast their vote. <laughs> Dude, like, no one is here. There's, like, five people watching. <laughs> and they're like, oh, hell yeah, let's get Lady Ningguang into this. And she's like, I was just trying to drink some wine. That makes a total of 13 judges with 13 votes between them. Each judge will vote for their preferred finalist, and the one who receives the most votes will be today's winner. It's all so exciting! <laughs> no one's here. <laughs> and now, please join me in welcoming our two contestants into the arena. Uh, Come on out! No, no, this, is, this is so weird. To my left, a competition favorite down from Dihua. Life's harsh when you live on a marsh, but this kitchen ace will put a smile on your face. Please welcome Smiley Genshou! And start people clapping and shouting like, ooh. Uh, 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 hi, everyone. They didn't insert anything. <laughs> Awkward silence. Whoa! Yin Xiao made it into the finals too! Um, but what's up with him? He seems really nervous. To be fair, it's a big event. It literally is. No one's here. Yin Xiao! <laughs> Chin up! Shoulders back! Everyone from the inn is super proud of you! This feels like I'm watching an episode of Dora the Explorer where nothing is going on and there's like this child on the TV asking you, Have you seen the bridge? 
No one's talking to me, but I want you in front of your TV to talk to me, so I know I'm not alone. That's Paimon right now talking to us and be like, cheer for, cheer for the Zen PC. Huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> He's st directly staring into her, so goddamn it. And to my right, a stalwart of Liyue Harbor culinary scene, a little feisty with a whole lot of spicy, give it up for Xiangling! Uh, and her mysterious assistant, who knows who? Paimon knows, it's Guoba! No one is doing any- no one- no reactions- no Hey everybody, I'll do my best! God. Contestants, please repeat after me. As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. We still haven't figured out what's with the god of stove. <laughs> As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. I'm cringing. Uh... As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I um, solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by all competition procedures. And I, for my part, promise to uphold the principles of fairness, impartiality, and transparency in my officiation of the proceedings. Now, I will hand things over to the select panel judge, Ningguang, for the announcement of today's theme. Thank you all for being here today at the Masterful Chefs Finals. I am the Tianchuan Ningguang. She's like, why am I doing this? No one is here. <laughs> the organizers have chosen the theme for today's event, and that theme is of Earth and Waterborne. Why is Goba crying? Of Earth and Waterborne. Hmm, just like the Feast of Bounteous Land. It really captures the spirit of this year's Moonchase Festival. If you say so. It's like surf and turf, but the deep and meaningful version. The rules are simple. The one who receives the most votes wins. Tailor your dishes to the judge's preferences, or win over the audience with your originality. The choice is yours. Why is this not like some freestyle rapping competition? That would be cool. Or even a surfing event for some skins would be nice. Buying like a surfer outfit for a child. Why did I almost say tails? Always the red-haired people, am I right? Well then. I look forward to both of your contributions. Contestants will have one hour of cooking time available and may only use ingredients provided by the organizers in their dishes. I trust this is no problem. Okay, without further ado, let the cooking commence. Begin. Dude, like some events in my tiny ton. Time to pull out all the steps. More audience. Shall everyone why you're the best? The audience here is like non-existent. <laughs> whoop whoop, go Xiangling. Traveler, Paimon! Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming to support me. Don't you worry. I'm gonna make this the best tasting dish I've ever cooked. This is like when your friend is like having their having their real their weird school play and theater class, and you're like, hey, of course I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna support you all the way through. And then you you you've been there like since five minutes, and you realize this is fucking boring. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and then you start playing Tetris on your phone. What? I no! First things first, get the stove on! Why am I playing a sh- Boba, get them! Xiao oh. thought the side should be milder, which makes sense to contrast with the main dish. And I guess that's what Xinyan meant. You gotta have on beats and off beats. Hmm, but at the same time, you have to end on a high note. So I think I'll add a little sugar to the crystal shrimp. What is going on? What the fuck? Um... Um, crystal shrimp, crystal shrimp. Uh, um, um, um. Hello, hello. Make delicious crystal shrimp. Oh, crystal shrimp, crystal shrimp, crystal shrimp, crystal shrimp. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, this thing too. You can cook for me. <laughs> what even? Did I did I do it? Okay. Pick suitable seasoning. Consomme is pretty bland to begin with. And I can't have two sides with the same texture. Uh, luckily the organizers have provided some very aromatic broth. It's just a little too Wait, 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 wait. What what what? Pick suitable seasonings. Make delicious huge and chili chicken. 
You turn chili chicken, you turn chili chicken, you turn chili chicken, you turn chili chicken, you turn chili chicken. Alright. Um. Uh. I'm not stressed or anything. I'm not, I'm not confused. I'm totally, totally fine. Oh, Yinxiao. He doesn't look so Because I already won. Goba. What just happened? Whoa, whoa, what's this? Hold up. Things are taking an unexpected turn on the masterful chef's stage. Sheng Ling's mysterious assistant appears to be aiding her opponent. Judges, are we going to allow this? We knew in advance that Sheng Ling would be accompanied by a mysterious assistant, and the judges agreed that the two could be classed as one individual for the purposes of the competition. But what do we say to this? Goba isn't even doing anything. He's just walking around. I take no issue with it. In any case, the assistant hasn't done much in the way of assisting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no competition would be complete without a little drama. All a part of being young. I won't be the old fogey that ruins it for them. But he literally is. <laughs> no, just kidding. What is even going on? Like, nothing is happening. They're like, oh. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Something. Please allow me to explain to our host. We have a host? Wh whose host? Wh who is... Prior to the competition, the judges reviewed both contestants, and we can comfortably confirm that neither side is participating in a way that contravenes the competition rules. Xiangling is a highly accomplished chef, and her assistant is more like family to her. Xiangling prepares all of her own dishes herself. All that her assistant will do is occasionally provide a fire source. Given Xiangling's level of culinary skill, the difference between her using firewood or her assistant is a trivial one. Literally, she's like backing us up because we told her to. It's okay, you will have to make friends. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's concerns. The presence of a mysterious assistant performing strange dance moves to cheerlead for Xiangling is a little unexpected. But the mysterious assistant has now started cheerleading for Smiley Yenxiao too, demonstrating total impartiality. By encouraging both Xiangling and her opponent, they have proven to be a fair supporter. That's right! Boba's not really outside help. Boba just likes to watch people cook! I'm sure the only reason they went over there is to try to help Yenxiao feel less nervous. Aw, cute. I give you all my word, Guoba will not interfere with the competition. And I would also say that it's a loss to the competition if Yan Xiao isn't at the top of his form. That's cute. I would also like to have a Goba here with me, but guys, this is <laughs> this isn't even a thing. Why are we talking about this in five minutes? Come on. I say that as someone who's eaten Yan Xiao's cooking at Wang Shuin before. He is an excellent chef, and I want this to be a competition between the best we both have to bring. I see. Hmm, most amusing. Uncle Tian, what's your opinion? I have no objections. It's an honor and a privilege to see two contestants so dedicated to having a fair and square contest. Hmm, the judges and the officiator accept this explanation. Let the competition continue. All right. Yan Xiao, are you all right? I don't know what's wrong with me. I've never been so nervous in my life. Ah, look, my hands won't stop shaking. No one's watching you. <laughs> Take it easy. I've been there before. I can help. Try saying a tongue twister to yourself in your head. Or think of some happy memories about your dad. What, what, if, what if he hates his dad? You want to give this guy a panic attack? Why my dad? That's a bit specific. She's like, when I'm nervous, I like to think about your dad. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, but your dad is a monster chef. That's completely different. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I'll think of my mom then. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you should carry on. I'll be fine. Don't hold up your own dishes on my account. Nothing's being held up. I'm finished already. Just, just put the whole pressure on him. It's okay. Huh? Oh, right. Uh, then I need to focus up and win this thing. Here you go. The attitude we want. You're a very capable chef, Yen Xiao. So come on, show everyone what you're made of, just like you showed us last time at Wang Xuan. Yes, you're right. I can do this. I can do this. All right. Thank you, Xiang Ling, and thanks to your um. Well, thanks. Time for me to get cooking. 
Swallow Yansho starts cooking immediately and his dish is ready in a flash. Time's up! Both contestants have now finished cooking. I would like to invite them to present their dishes to the judges for evaluation. We will proceed in the order that the contestants finished. Xiangling, please describe your dish. Sorry for being a mood killer, but you know what this event feels like? This is the equivalent to like having a YouTube thumbnail and a YouTube title being so clickbaiting and misleading that you're like, Oh my god, the Genshin cooking event! And then it's just... Whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> my dish is... Um. Jiyun chili chicken with sides of triple layered consomme and crystal shrimp. Mm. The theme is of earth and waterborne, which includes land and sea. In other words, land animals, fowl, and seafood are all potential ingredients. Animal. Damn. My main dish, Jiyun chili chicken, is a combination of fowl and chilies. Jiyun chilies capture the essence of the mountains where they grow, and fowl is a gift from the heavens. Triple layered consomme also uses fowl, and its other ingredients are ham and bamboo shoots. These are also flavors from the mountains, but they complement and contrast with the chicken dish. Fresh instead of spicy, cold instead of hot. <laughs> the crystal shrimp is made from a combination of rice, shrimp meat, and carrot. A thin, translucent skin wraps diced carrot and a whole shrimp. Fresh, crispy, and tender. Shrimps are a gift from the ocean. Tightly wrapping them in a skin made from rice makes this dish a blend of land and sea. Fresh with a hint of sweetness. It's the perfect note to end this course on. Ooh, a strong delivery there from Xiangling. Let's see what our next contestant, Yan Xiao, has to say. Let's go. My dish is <laughs> Adeptus Temptation with a mint salad and golden Ooh, shrimp. A bowl. five star meal. As Xiangling says, earth and water means land and sea. So birds, land animals, and seafood were also the ingredients I incorporated. That is not weak. Adeptus Temptation is a much loved dish in Liyue. And as chef of Wang Shuin, I've always been proud to offer this as the signature specialty dish of our menu. Yo, seafood. <laughs> it's a complex dish with very particular ingredients. Smoked ham, crab, fresh shrimp meat, and matsutake. I chose this as my main dish as a sign of respect toward my profession and to this competition. He's gonna win, isn't he? The mint salad is my first side. Cool and tender with a subtle sweetness. It's a perfect answer to the rich and strong flavors of the Adeptus Temptation. Golden Shrimp Balls is a time-honored <laughs> classic loved by everyone. A hearty and wholesome broth, followed up with a shrimp ball. <laughs> oh, pure bliss. Mm, Paimon can smell it from all the way over here. It's driving Paimon crazy. That's no surprise. Judges, please sample the dishes. Three onside judges try to consent dishes. Mm, very impressive. Both contestants' dishes are well considered, expertly made, and truly delicious. I'm gonna have another golden shrimp. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I shall have to sample both contestants' dishes once more before I can reach a verdict. Paimon must be so jealous that she's not in with the judges right now. Now, Xiang Ling has taken an interesting approach here. She's chosen a cold dish as her main. I have to say, that's a bold move. It's also a unique take on Zhuiyun chili chicken. Although the dish as a whole is served cold, the chili peppers have been stir-fried, so they're still just a little warm on the inside. You get a nice crunch as you bite in. Then you get the spiciness and warmth all coming in together. And then just a hint of that wonderful pepperiness to top it all off. It's quite simply extraordinary. Mm, this Adeptus Temptation is quite exceptional. The triple layer consomme is also a very superlative contribution. Excellent flavor, well balanced between sweet and savory. Yes, the standard is very high. Judges of the select panel, I will now ask you to consider your votes carefully before writing them down and handing them to me. Also, the organizing committee has selected today's audience judges, and they are now evaluating the dishes. Everyone who's been lucky enough to sample today's dishes, please consider and cast your vote independently. Uh, how are we not involved in this? Why didn't they pick us to be judges? <laughs> True. Simon has buckets of passion and oodles of expertise when it comes to food. Sure does. If they don't want Paimon, it's their loss. 
<laughs> Calm down, I mean, I cooked the same dishes for you. Like, no, I won't. Gonna pull for Kumo. For Kumo. all the chefs there are in the world, and for all the amazing dishes that you can cook, the fact remains that you're the one who treats Paimon the best. <laughs> wholesome. Judges off stage sample the dishes carefully. Well, thank you all for waiting. All votes have been received and counted, and the results have been returned to Ninglong. I now invite Ningguang to take the floor and announce the results of the Masterful Chef's Finals. It is my pleasure to announce that the winner of the Masterful Chef's Finals What's is... What's with the audience voting? <laughs> I thought they were gonna vote too, okay. Not gonna By a good. mere one vote margin, Xiangling! Damn, that was actually close. I mean, I feel kind of bad for Yansha. It would have been cooler if he won, probably. Yansha was a great chef, too, Paimon. Well, there it is. <sighs> I knew it. It was a close contest, but we have a winner. Liu Harbor's Xiangling has beaten Dihua Marsh's Yanshao by just one vote. There can only be one winner, but the fact that this was so close shows just how much both of these outstanding chefs managed to impress our judges. Thank you both for your stellar contributions here today. A big thank you to all the audience for being here today, especially those who have come from far and wide. As officiator, I declare the result of this competition to be fair and valid, thus bringing the Masterful Chef's finals to a close. Hell yeah. Thank you all for coming. Until next time. Please exit the venue in an orderly fashion and remember to take all of your personal belongings with you. Come on, let's go over and take a look. All right. <laughs> Gobo's waiting for us. Oh, what's wrong? What's the meaning behind this? Talk to Shangling and Smiley and Shep. I want to talk to Kuching, but where did she go? Can I talk to Madame Ping? Hello, old friend. Oh, child, it's you. No, child is my boyfriend. I'm Zhongli. The Moon Chase Festival is a most lovely time here in Liyue, so feel free to walk around and see the sights. About the Moon Chase Festival. The meaning of the festival in ages past was quite different. It was about the ancients of Liyue seeking the adeptal path. Nowadays, it's more about admiring the moon, eating, and enjoying our time together with one another. I kind of dislike that they're, like, in this event. They're like not really telling us enough about the Moon Chase Festival, like if you compare it to Lantern Rite. Because in Lantern Rite there was like so much lore, you knew what was going on, what they were celebrating, and here's just like open these chests, cook dishes, <laughs> talk to people. The meaning of festivals will shift with time and some traditions will be forgotten. However, everyone's hopes for the future will remain the same, no matter what day, what the day or age. Thank you, Madam Ping. Oh, I, I, I was just trying to walk, but I pressed the wrong button. So, is it okay if I leave that here? Flowers always seem Ah, cute. Oh, here we are. Looks like I won this time, Yan Xiao. But I'd still like to try your dishes, if that's okay. Did Kuching run away because she like, <laughs> she she stole one of the the golden shrimp balls? Sure, I'll have a try of yours too. Two exchange chest dishes. Oh, truly exquisite. <laughs> no doubt in my mind why you're the winner here. Mm, this Adeptus temptation is really good. It's so fresh, I'm almost moved to tears. What I don't get with like uh, cooking competitions is that sometimes you make like a whole bowl of food and it just goes to waste because no one's gonna eat it. I think like everyone who's like gathered around here should have a should have a, like a taste in the winning dishes themselves and be like, well, I'll try this one. <laughs> well, just goes to show that you have a taste for the finer things in life. No, no, you've got me all wrong. We're just a small neighborhood restaurant too, so I totally understand. Food is life, and customers are at the heart of all food culture. So humble food cooking is not to be looked down upon. Why do I feel like they're gonna start business together someday? <laughs> <sighs> is that right? Huh. I'd heard you'd gotten famous for your experimental approach to cooking and were all about fancy and exclusive foods. 
Never realized you'd done your time in a small kitchen, too. <laughs> well, there you have it. All the greats come from the smaller places. That's actually a cute quote. The same goes for you. You can't work in an inn kitchen unless you know how to consistently please customers. It's no wonder your food is so top-notch. You're the kind of competition I'm glad to have. Let's stay in touch. Maybe we can find some time in the future to <laughs> uh, trade tips. That's actually cute. You got it. And next time we meet as competitors, let's both be even better than we are now. All right. Deal. Awesome. Lots of the big stone now. Traveler, Paimon! Thanks for coming. Did you get to try the food? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so yet. Don't even go there. Paimon still pee. Why, Paimon? Now's your chance to eat. <laughs> I can't believe it. You didn't get picked? Well, never mind. Don't get mad. I'll make some more for you when we get the back. The food's right there, bro. You will? Woohoo! Great! Oh, uh, the organizer said that Yen Xiao and I need to go register our delivery addresses. Apparently, they're gonna deliver an exclusive ingredients package and the prize money at a later date. So I need to get moving. I'll come find you guys after. Prima gems. Ah, <laughs> uh, Xiaoling seems really happy. Good for her. Looks like Kuching and Ningguang left already. As the organizers, they must have gone to wrap up some last minute things. Let's go ask them for an update about the statue. Yeah, please. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Look for Kuching. Alright, meeting her at the same spot where we met Child. There she is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, when you're old, you just don't know where you're going. Sometimes things just go down. Hello. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually standing here hanging at the, at the cliff, but okay. Kuching, there you are! You didn't see me just fall down in front of... <laughs> I'm like, hey yo, Kuching falls down the cliff. <laughs> There's like the equivalent to... Oh, this is completely for you. Throws ball into the basket and completely misses. Like that one meme, oh. you know? You found me. Huh? Is everything okay? Something is way in Kuching's mind. <laughs> is it because of the shrimp balls? Traveler, I have found myself in something of a predicament. In the competition, I voted for Smiley Yenshao. Hey, it's okay. So you're frustrated because you can't go back and vote for Xiangling instead? Nah. No, that's not it. As a judge, I had a duty to remain objective. I made my decision after thinking about it very carefully. And my conscience is clear. Because you made your favorite dish? Xiangling is my friend. So by rights, I should be honest with her about Doesn't this. Doesn't matter. But, as you know, I voted based purely on my personal opinion. As a contestant, Xiangling may not be able to appreciate this. And I do not know how to deal with people of her temperament. I just don't know how to break it to what her. What do you mean temperament? She doesn't have a temperament. She's just pure sunshine. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just say it however comes naturally. Oh. Xiang Ling of all people isn't bothered about that kind of stuff. And anyway, she still won in the end. There she is. I was gonna say you don't need to bring this up to anyone actually because it doesn't matter and no one's gonna ask, but there she is. Oh hey, here you are. I've been looking for you for ages. Xiang Ling. There's something I need to tell you. Uh, you can also... This is like, this is Kuching talking to me, actually. She's saying, there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> I'm so sorry I ruined your pity. I knew you were trying to poke a cow me. Uh, frustration is hitting hard. Hmm? Wh what is it? My grandfather always said to me, in contests of food, always follow your heart. Which is to say that in gastronomical disputes, or indeed competitions, one must cast their vote for the party that they agree with. This decision must be based on one's honest thoughts, not influenced by any external factors. This is the way that they're making this seem to be so much more dramatic than it actually is. Feels like watching your best friend getting his heart broken at the prom. <laughs> of course, that was just my grandfather's opinion. But... I have to say, I am inclined to think he had a point. So, despite the fact that I am your friend, I cast my vote for Smiley Yen Xiao's Adeptus Temptation. Thank you, Mina Golden Shrimp Balls. <laughs> well, 
Well, maybe it was. I like golden shrimp balls. Is that a problem? <laughs> Shutting up. <laughs> you were acting so serious that I honestly thought something was up. It's fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> but if she would have lost, then bam. Some fists would have, like, been flying through the air. Huh? You voted for who you wanted to. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's exactly how it should be. Otherwise, how could it be a fair competition? So, you made a point of telling me. Is that because you were worried that it made you a bad friend? <clears throat> I... Don't be absurd. <laughs> <sighs> Didn't I say already? I love this about you. You're just so conscientious about everything. Half-baked feedback just isn't meaningful to me at this stage. Seeking reassurance is what novices do, and it's been a long time since I was a novice. The way forward from today will only get more challenging, as will the dishes I'll need to cook. Honestly, I'll meet friends like you along the way. Is it just me? Because, like, I feel like some of the characters, for example, Xiangling just now, have, like, uh, kind of distorted his sound in their voice lines when they're saying words with a lot of S, and they're like, you know. You have a strong sense of responsibility, Kuching. But, you know, not everything is always about responsibility. Yes, you're a Qixing, but you're also you, Kuching. When you're with friends, you don't need to think about everything so thoroughly. You know that's what Ningguang's like, right? Beidou's always telling me about how well she gets along with Ningguang. They even play chess aboard her ship sometimes. Oh, that's cute. So you see, Ningguang's kind of bold in that she doesn't let her identity and reputation get in the way of her ability to have a good time. You could take a leaf out of her book. Outside of work, it's time to let go and relax. Shangling is right on the money. You don't need to be strict with, your, with yourself. Traveler, Shangling, I... No. Uh, anyway, what are we standing around here for? Let's go and check on the status of the Stove God statue. You know, with characters like Kuching and Ayaka, I know that they've been like a fan favorite of the community for a while. And I'm wondering like how, because... Th there hasn't been like any content for them and then I play their story quest so like I see them in the quest and I'll be like oh I actually love them too now but Ayaka for example had sims since the beginning of the game since her better model was released and she wasn't even in the game we didn't even know anything about her same with Kuching she doesn't even have a story quest she was like in the main quest for two minutes before this came out and so so many people were simping for her Talk about what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go to Eugene Terrace. Um, you're only realizing your character is dead when you're trying to swerve through the floor. Oh, okay, we're going to the stone. Hell yeah, finally. Finally. I'm here. Check the large rock. Let's do this. How strange. It hasn't changed one bit. Oh, that's weird. This doesn't make any sense. We cooked our hearts out. But why would it have to do with the cooking, though? Maybe it's not even this god of stove, the stove god, whoever. Does this mean the competition wasn't enough to awaken the statue? Maybe it's about something greater than this. It's about, like, realizing the value of friendship or something. <laughs> it's the god of friendship. Oh, well. I suppose it was simply not meant to be. Hey, there's still time. Don't lose hope. Yeah, we've waited this long already. There's no harm in waiting a little longer. Except the quest ends in two days. Right, Xiangling? Yep, there's still time. Let's be patient. We'll all see this through together. On another note, I have some good news for you, Kuching. Things are looking optimistic for that recipe you gave me. Master came by before the competition and filled in the parts that were missing. So now I'll be able to cook it. Oh. In fact, I'll go find somewhere to make it right now. Wait here. Shangling. Oh, uh, and Traveler, could you come with me? Sure. Huh? You only just beat Smiley and Chow. You think you're up for challenging us already? <laughs> All right, time for me to get real. She didn't say anything about a cook-off, though. Some something of a kitchen got myself. Oh my god! Oh my god, this sounds like a Spider-Man reference. 
obviously not what I meant. Like, you know, that one scene in... Was it Spider-Man 1? I think so. You collect recipes, don't you? I thought you'd probably be needing this dish during your travels, so I figured I'd share it with you. Oh, right! Paimon knew that! <laughs> Sheesh, we totally misread that situation. I didn't think I interested, man. Who am I kidding, Shangling Surrey Kitchen Queen? Jeez, uh -huh. careful leaving your words so fast, you'll give yourself heartburn. I'm <laughs> cute. What are you staring at me for? Go on, go get on with your cooking. Ah, oh, wholesome. My wife, my wife. My beloved. Yes. Will we ever manage to reawaken the statue? I don't know. I can use my Shongli old. That will probably crack it open. This is order. Nope. Damn. Make delicious chili mines cornbread burnt buns. What the fuck? Don't think I have to open a recipe. <laughs> what is going on? All right. Um. Do you have to go? To one min restaurant. Where can how can I one min restaurant where? Um I don't even know where I am. <laughs> oh come on. Make delicious chili mines corn bread buns. This sounds like a jingle for some advertisement for a restaurant or something. I am no longer locked from co-op. Hey, that's cool, I guess. Also, I still haven't got my primer gems, so... Well, we are going to one main restaurant. We are making... Where is it? Chill. Oh, it's got paws. That's cute. This is actually cute. Also nice that we have all the ingredients for everything that we're cooking at the moment. Thank you for that quest. Talk to Kuching. So this is what the dish from the recipe looks like. Let's go give it to Kuching. Okay. Mine's ready too. Let's go together. Where are you? Why are you not here? Yeah, I was confused for a second. I was like, wait, I thought Shangling was gonna make the food and now we made the food and where where is Shangling? Did she just dump it on us? But Nope, she was here too. Can I climb up here? I think I can. If I got stamina. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. And you are standing right there. Oh, maybe maybe her grandpa is locked in the statue and he will come out now when we offer the food. We're back. The traveler and I made one each. Here, have a taste while it's still warm. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. Kuching tastes everyone's dishes. Huh? Aww. Uh, what is it? What does that face mean? <laughs> I... This flavor... I've tasted it before. Of course, you gave me the recipe, so you definitely ate this before, uh, Kuching. Uh, apologies, Xiongling, Traveler. Thank you both. This is everything I had hoped it would be. It tastes wonderful, and... Quite amazingly... Somehow it took me right back to my childhood, when my grandfather was still around. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master had filled in the missing parts of the recipe for me, I realized that I already knew how to make this dish. Hmm. You already knew? You mean you were able to make this without ever seeing the recipe? Is Xiangling Cushing's grandpa? Uh-huh. My dad taught me how to make it. Wait, but isn't this dish from Kuching's grandpa's notes, though? Are they related? Are they related? About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. Okay, I see. But maybe he was, like, friends with uh, Xiangling's grandpa. 
My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liyue's customs and traditions that are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. <laughs> He used to say, books are just a bridge that bring us a little closer to history. It's up to those of us in later generations to ask these questions, search for the answers, and decide what they mean. Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Qixing. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time too, from myth to reality. Aww. For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my grandfather's study, seeing all of his You notes. know, this is actually sweet and a s bittersweet, sad story. But I know that a fandom would be like, haha, gr grandfather issues. As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying to restore to its original form. But, unfortunately... Without the full recipe, he never quite succeeded. What if Shang Li shows up now and just hands out the whole recipe and then just leaves? But he doesn't just walk away, he just vanishes like Shao does. Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. <sighs> the memories. This really is the taste of my childhood. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well... At least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad, and supposedly it's been passed down that way for generations. We call them chili mince cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect thing to eat on the go. Cute. God, I just got jump scared by his voice. Fuck. <laughs> Seeing Bloba just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Bloba. How do you even met something like that? <laughs> How did you first meet? Yeah, tell me. It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there. So I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on What it. if Goba is the god of the stove? Oh my god. Then I ended up falling asleep. And when I woke up, I found out that Guoba had eaten every last one. Guoba followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. I think I might be onto something. Hold up! Stop the conversation! Look! The, the stone! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it, Goba, would be in there. It burst open! It's Super Goba. It's... It's... Is that Goba? Goba? What are you... What? <laughs> Uh, ah, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Oh my god. Oh my god. Master! Granny, look! The, the stone god statue looks just like Goba! And she didn't recognize it when Goba was walking around? Oh, indeed it does. After all, Goba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stone. Oh my god. Goba... Guoba is a god? <laughs> you asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. Has he always been in this form or does he have like a badass human or like, I don't know, adeptus form? The stove god has always been a deity with great affection for the people. And who acts in response to their desires. To him, the heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. I'm wondering if people started playing Shangling because of Goba now. <laughs> After this quest, they'd be like, oh my god, her little companion is actually a god and we haven't known for the whole time. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire. 
and passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. I feel like this reminds me of some other story I've watched once with like something turning out to be a god even though it was just a tiny animal or something. I don't know, it might be from some child's movie. So that would be so real, so weird, like, if you're Shangling and you have this thing next to you, you'd be, like, treating it like your animal, like your little house pet for the whole time. And then you find out it's actually a god and you feel like you get, like, inferiority complex. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish he had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. Plot twist, Goba is also her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the stove god statue and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Now it makes sense they have been talking about Goba this whole time in the competition. Okay, okay, I get it now. Of course, the stove god himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true stove god has been here with us all along. <sighs> How does it feel, seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Ah, <sighs> look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Groba used to be different from now? <laughs> Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? Mm, maybe R Rex Lapis did the same. The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are... Far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than we adepti, with our immortal forms. I can actually see... Narukami Island from here. Wow. He once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue oh. and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. You mortals no longer remember him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti to the common folk. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Okay. Machosius, <laughs> god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. I saw this picture. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Well, I actually didn't think that he would be a god. I thought it would be some funny superhero story. Many years ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, <laughs> flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster oh, and plague is. arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself <laughs> to quell the calamities. 
His power expended, and his wits greatly reduced. Thus, his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame. Then went into the mountains oh. and entered into a long slumber. I'm actually crying. Why? <laughs> oh, God. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. <laughs> Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly what? moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. She was this young? The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Oh, Azdaha. And the... Uh, Nature chaser. provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's Ciao, own that's grace. Red and pink, I guess, is everyone saying. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. <laughs> Baby Huta, oh my god! Look at Shinyan in the background. <laughs> Beto. I'm so crying. Fuck. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Yuchin! Oh, is that her name? I don't know. Oh, there's me! Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into Am the I future, gonna speak? may we thrive. Say something, Ifer. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> oh, man. Once told me that dining oh. is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said. For people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it paves the way for millennia of human history and culture to come. My dear friend, Liu has changed so much while you have slept. Looking at the prosperity and beauty around us today, does it make you happy? Boba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? <laughs> uh, he... He is not who he once was. Even the power of speech evades him now. There is no way he could have told you. He doesn't have any brain cells anymore. <laughs> oh, well, but, but... Mm. Can we all can we all hug him, please? Do not be saddened, Xiangling. There are two sides to everything. Guoba may have lost many of his formal faculties, but he is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those with a mind and with the knowledge will certainly be troubled by all manner of things. But he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage, Everything he took upon himself, he was also ready to part with. His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk and play. Allow him to eat, drink, and be merry. I will! You can count on me! Xiangling, you have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around because he has respect for you. No. The moment he awoke, he was met with a familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread buns he ate. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented. And he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. 
though he remembered nothing. Eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. That is why he stuck by you. How, how was she able to cook something? She was like five years old. You may be the first person in history to give the stove god the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes you quite a remarkable chef. I love Shagling's cooking too. I know it doesn't matter now, but I'm a simp too. Hello, hi, I'm still here. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do. Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Time for me to say goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you for joining my team, even though I wanted to I wanted to me. <laughs> Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I look forward to spending more time together in the future. Sounds good. We'll be waiting. Bye bye. I guess my dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a while since you came by. Why don't you join me? He thinks about you all the time, you know. He's always telling me to invite you over. Aww. Oh, goodness me. Then, far be it from me to refuse. Off we go, then. Let's saunter over gently and see how all the city folk are getting along. Well, let's go. Go to one man restaurant. I will be going to one win wawa. <laughs> I will be going to wawa. I always feel like I'm drowning when I jump down here. God damn it. On my way to getting my primal gems. Wow. I feel like some people probably have noticed this before. Before the story revealed who the stove god was. But still, I'm glad I at least caught on to this before it got revealed by the game itself. Even though it was pretty close. I still be smart. I'm here. Hi, Dad. I'm back. Hey, hey, what are you doing there? I should be the one handling that. Oh, is that the scene that I've seen on Twitter? Oh no, Glove has taken off. Is it? Is it? Look who it is. Yay! Hmm? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello there, old friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless my soul. Are you out for a stroll as well? Does she know that he's Rex? I don't know if she knows that this is his current farm. Given the season, probably. it felt fitting to take a leisurely walk while the meal is being prepared. He probably just didn't want to to be seen when we went to Madame Ping in the main quest because we didn't know that he was Rex Lapis by then. So she probably knows. Quite right. And it also gave us the chance to run into you. Guoba may not recognize you, but as ever, he seems quite delighted to see you. That is so cute. So, Guoba doesn't remember anything, but can still feel when something's familiar? Friendship will always withstand the ravages of I've missed you so much. I haven't seen you in so long. I'm literally crying. Traveler. What do you think of the name of this festival? Moon Chase. Oh, okay, different seasonal. The moon is a carrier of countless emotions. So many things only seem to surface as we gaze up beneath its poignant glow. Wherever the moonlight shines, the heart is wont to follow. Fond memories of those no longer with us. Debts of gratitude to old friends. The meaning of ages past and gone. All wrapped up in the city that has existed for so many moons to date. All these things and more. They are why people chase the moon. <laughs> in old age, the sight of many things puts one in a wistful mood. But children are always a beautiful sight to see. Such exuberant life force. It, it seems to well up from deep within the land itself. A land that has been in existence for so many millennia, and yet one that still dazzles today. Perhaps that is what defines Leo. Traveler, this moon chase festival has been all the more entertaining with you here to witness it. Now, let's have Xiang Ling brew us a nice pot of tea. We shall drink and chat at our leisure. Is Shangli gonna come with us? 
please. And we done it. Oh, this was a short pleasure, but at least he was here, guys. He was here. Oh, Shelling. Hello. Hmm. Everyone's here to eat. What should I cook? Let me think. I've got some fowl and some fish and shrimp meat, so I can do two snack dishes. Yes, and a few stir fries. <laughs> Everyone's gonna love it. <laughs> Just back to the usual. How much Prima Gems do I have? Oh. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, guys, I would say this is it for today's episode. Oh my god, I'm so glad we met this fella again. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my god! Look at him! <laughs> He's here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Much better. Much better. Oh god, I missed this so much. Hello! Hello! <laughs> mm. The food at Wan Min restaurant is excellent. I eat here often. Ah, oh, you can say that again. Xiang Ling is a remarkable child. Surely the culinary talent of the century. This guy be like, oh my god, is that Xiang Ling? Uh, Xiang Ling. Shang Li, he's so hot. Damn, I'm glad I, I I noticed this because I wouldn't have seen if I wouldn't have seen him, I would have hated myself forever. <laughs> Indeed, to have mastered the craft at her age lends credence to the old aphorism that heroes are made. Young. I'm so glad to finally see Shang Li and Madame Ping interact. I feel. You probably see this when you play a story quest. I don't know, I haven't played a story quest yet, so this is definitely something very wholesome and much needed. Does she say something different? Mm. Okay. Oh, you can... They both say the same thing. Indeed. Okay, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> and in the next update, we're gonna see Child again. They are doing God's work, to be honest. They are doing God's work. Okay, but now I'm gonna end this episode because I still need to farm some Primal Gems with my friend and co-op now. So, see you in the next video. And until then, she said, bye-bye. soon.